The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Yeah! Ah, come on. Oh, 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 20 yeah. more! Oh! From Park Place Lanes and Wyndham, featuring outstanding candlepin bowlers from all over New England. You're gonna hear some noise if this is a strike. Got a shot at it! Yes! Oh, it. oh wow! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your host, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. And hi, everybody, and welcome once again to the Winds and Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Two full hours here on Sunday afternoon, as always. And this is our last regular Sunday of the regular season as we have uh, a championship match to attend to, Dan Murphy, with two guys trying to become the last qualifier into the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. So, well, we have three weeks ago, we were talking about that uh, sixth and de deciding piece of the puzzle, and now we're down to... Uh, well, two pieces left, and <laughs> it's, it's Glenn and Neil. One of those will move on, and, and we'll have our uh, six qualifiers for the Tournament of Champions. All right, let's meet our two bowlers. First of all, if you were not here last week, you missed one of the better matches we've ever had here on Stars and Strikes. Our number two seed looking for his second straight win after a very dramatic come-from-behind victory last week from Lynn, Massachusetts, Neil Goslin. Okay, Neil uh, carries an average of 127, 459 for high triple. Roll off score 674 and has... Uh, a few thousand more uh, rooters for him after that performance last week. Uh, last week he came from 53 pins down with 14 frames remaining to knock off Gary Carrington. Yeah, that's the amazing thing. Being 53 pins down against anybody is amazing, but against Gary Carrington, that's a little bigger notch in your belt because he's one of the best. All right, let's meet our other bowler for this championship show, the guy who's going to try and stop Neil's momentum. He's been waiting in that number one spot for several weeks, and now is his turn to shine from Peterborough, New Hampshire, our number one seed, Glenn LeBlanc. Okay, and Glenn comes in averaging uh, 127, much as uh, same as Neil. Uh, 190 for a high single, 451 for a high triple, 686 for the roll-off score. So all their stats are very, very close. Let's give you a couple more stats. $500 to the runner-up of this week's program on Stars and Strikes. $1,000 to the winner. But more importantly, the winner moves into the Tournament of Champions, which begins next Sunday at 12 noon right here on the Winds. We'll be talking a lot about that in the hour ahead. But we're going to take a break and come back with three strings of candlepin bowling to decide this thing between Neil Gosselin and Glenn LeBlanc. We'll get it started right after these words. And then there were two. Number two seed Neil Gosselin, number one seed Glenn LeBlanc will battle for the final spot in the 1992 Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. And these are the five men who have qualified so far. Paul Berger with that target score, 437 up top. Dave Richards at 418. Tom Morgan at 416. Mike Morgan at 410. And Stu Bergman at 380. And at the end of this hour, the sixth name will be added to that list. One of these two guys will join them. Neil Gosselin now, our number two seed, will begin the program. You just never know what's going to happen when you turn the cameras and the lights on. And last week was one of those real <laughs> special ones. Of course, I'm sure Gary Carrington would not agree, but he was very gracious in defeat. And uh, it happens. You know, it happens uh, both ways if you play this game long enough. Well, opening box seven for Neil. Do you ever remember being in a situation like that where... A large lead kind of unfortunately slipped yes. away. Yeah, yeah. kind of slipped away. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it starting to dwindle and it seemed like a, an awful lot of pressure on me to try to <laughs> stop the leak in the dike and I couldn't. <laughs> well, we've talked before, I think, about having a big lead and what that can be like as Neil Goslin will not get the head pin for the spare. But we've talked before about what that can be like. When you have the huge lead, all of a sudden your natural tendency is, ha, ah, you know, take a breath and right. figure that it's over. 
And then somebody throws a double strike, and then you say to yourself, my, I, can, I, can I lose a 53-pin lead? <laughs> it can happen. Glenn LeBlanc now, a left-hander from Peterborough, New Hampshire. Ouch. Hmm. There's an interesting leaf. The two, the four, the five, the nine, and the ten. Remember, the win is important, but the final total, the winning score, is equally as important because they could uh, assure themselves of a bigger paycheck in the Tournament of Champions by knocking off or climbing ahead some of those that are already qualified and we showed you the other scores. So the high score 437, the lowest score 380. Glenn LeBlanc has been here quite a bit of late. Been here quite a bit this season. He was here just uh, a few weeks ago in doubles. Bowling with his partner, Bob Mazur. They won a couple of matches before, nice dropped, there. before dropping one. He's able to snap this wood to get both of those pins for the first mark of the match. Neil Goslin leaves the 310. Nice spare for Neil. Spare in the third, his first of the match. He made this shot on the other side twice last week. That's right. Critical spares, too. And then he has that now famous <laughs> longest ever in the history of well, Stars and Strikes. Unofficially. Unofficially. We went back after last week's show and the longest strike. timed it. If you weren't with us, uh, Right in the middle of Neil's comeback, he threw a strike in the fourth box of the third game, which really helped uh, helped him get on the way to the comeback. And it just seemed like forever before the pins finally went down. He had the three, five, six, ten remaining at first, and then a piece of wood, well, actually two pieces of wood collided in the back of the plate, and one piece went over and hit the ten pin. And then it seemed like about an hour and a half later, the <laughs> final pin went down. So we went back and we timed it, and it was eight and a half seconds long. And we think that's about the longest strike we've ever had here. 40 through four for Neil Goslin, and Glenn LeBlanc fills his spare in the second with six. Glenn, uh, earlier this season, came close to getting into the Tournament of Champions in doubles when he reached the doubles championship match with Tom O'Brien, but they lost to Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn. Tom O'Brien later qualified with another partner. And Glenn, of course, has never been in the Tournament of Champions as a singles competitor. But he was very, very excited about the fact that he qualified in the number one spot. That is the key. And uh, obviously you give yourself a better chance if you're up in the top of the roll-off when the final five-string roll-off is held. You don't have to win as many programs. And uh, Glenn has been usually the number three, four, five seed when he's come on, and that makes it a little more difficult. This time he's number one, and he's hoping to take advantage of it. Strike on strike, not on spare, but a strike in the fifth for Neil Goslin. Strike almost on spare. He had a spare back in the third, then the eight box, now the strike. And uh, he gave a lot of credit last week to the crowd that was here rooting him on. And they're here today also, and they'll make some noise. Seems even louder today. But then again, this is for a thousand bucks, so. They're yelling like he's buying dinner, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, from the back. Well, he played the 2-4. He needed some help, and he got it. 
Left the three, and that's what you have to do on a split like that. You need something coming back. Glenn LeBlanc now will try to answer. He's got a nice mix there, and he leaves the nine pin. Spare it up in the fifth. See the match dead even right at the moment, but to keep it that way, Glenn will have to match the strike. Really turn that one over. Gets an eight fill out of it. He's himself just the one and the two, and I think the wood next to that will carry both pins. As long as he doesn't come up too high. Whoa. <laughs> In between, but he makes the spare, down by two, but he keeps pace with Neil Goslin, who has thrown the spare, strike spare. Ooh, looked better than that. 5-9, well, which is all right, but he's also got the seven pin. Trying to cut the five pin over. Seven through seven. They dropped that one. They actually dropped it behind the foul line. Bounced it a little bit. Usually if you release it like that too soon, the ball's gonna go off to the right. That's what happened. Overcorrection there. Got a full Worcester. Three nine went out with the first ball. The two and the eight went out with the second ball. Now let's see if he tries to grab either two in the corner or go for the head pin. He's going for the head pin. Ooh. And he cut the five pin. Ended up with a six. That was a strange box. <laughs> Actually, he took the five and the six pins. It's pretty difficult to do. <laughs> now Glenn working on a spear. Nine fill would tie the match up again. Oh, wow, big how about strike. A ten fill? Ooh. Three marks in a row with that strike. Two spares now followed by this strike. So he's still down by a pin, but he'll take the lead with this ball. And he'll leave the two, seven, and 10. Try and put a strike up on the spare, or rather a spare up on the strike. Oh yes, that close. Mm. What an effort. You look on Glenn's face, he thought he had made the shot. Ten box and he leads by 14. Neil Gosselin last week then, through the first 15 boxes, the first half of the match, had 152. Over the last 15, he had 239. Wow. And 11 of his last 14 boxes were marks. That's incredible. He had two marks in the first half of the match, 11 in the second half. And that's a nice spare right there for Neil. One, three, seven, and nine. And there they go. Spare in the ninth. That strike he had last week, the real slow one, of course the popular term for yeah. popular term for strike right now is the hammer. Somebody asked for it and they got it. <laughs> that one last week that he threw though was more like a velvet hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing soft about that strike though. Gives him 113 in the ninth, 123 the tenth, plus the two bonus balls. So he's getting in spurts. Two. Two. Oh, he'll take another one. <laughs> <laughs> the 
for the spare. Yes! 40 more in the last two boxes, and Neil Gosselin makes it a 133. Jumping that wood over there, hit the top of the seven pin. It almost jumped over. Well, Glenn's gonna try to answer the call. He's at 107. Regardless of what happens, it's gonna be close after string number one. Well, that wood swung around nicely for him. One, three, four, seven. Looks like he just sweeped the wood down and everything. Shoot for the red line. Be a little high. Mm. Our participating sponsor on this series of Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Come to Salem and save. Be sure and stop in in Salem, New Hampshire. See Emmett Horgan and the gang at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Tell them you saw their messages and heard about them here on Stars and Strikes. Tenth and final box, game one for Glenn LeBlanc, looking for a mark that might even this thing up. Two, four, seven, eight, ten. Let's see. Hell, looks like his ball may carry him off the red line of that center piece of wood. I don't know if he can carry all four pins or not. No. no. Uh, hit the front one, capped it. Kind of lost all the effect that the ball would have given him. Well, if you can grab these three, this, it'll be a six-pin advantage. And there you have it. So it's Neil Gosselin taking the lead by seven after one. Two games to go. Championship Sunday on Stars and Strikes. Don't go away. Glenn LeBlanc to start the second game. Wow, that ball was right in the one-two pocket, I thought, anyways. And he leaves himself a 6-9-10, which isn't too bad, but he also has the eight pin. Can't snap it over. Next Sunday at 12 noon, the first week of the five-week Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions doubleheader. So we will have two tournaments of champions for you. Singles at noon, doubles at one, and it all starts next Sunday right here on the wins. Right back in the pocket this time he gets the spare leave, the, just the 10 pin showing. And the spare. Mark number five for Glenn LeBlanc. He trailed, but just by seven coming into this game. Neil Gosselin kind of turned a subpar string into a pretty good one. The last two boxes of that first game as he went spare, strike, spare to finish it up. And a six box. Had a six box in the first game, too. And big first ball that time. That's the one he wants. Crossed over in the one two pocket. Got some good mixing action. Nine of them clear away. Need some help from behind for the five. Matches the mark already put up by Glenn, although Glenn's is a spare, and this will be the bonus ball. And he's right on the head pin, but only four. Nope. So Glenn will move on over to lane 31. That lead that you saw on the computer scoreboard reflective of the fact that Glenn has completed that second box, but of course, Neil still has to fill his strike and will probably retake the lead when he does. But Glenn has at least a chance for a mark here in the fourth, although that would, could be scary. 
can get by it, but it'd be a delicate shot, or you can try to hit it high. He does. He does. Good spare there in the fourth. This one, yeah, one strike up. Park Place Lane's noted for this high scoring house and a lot of strikes. So that was that chance of the double. 3 6 left for Neil. Trying to make it two in a row. Well, now he's got to wait. Wood rolling back and forth. No, missed it. Got to be even tougher to wait when you feel like you're bowling well and you don't want to lose your rhythm. I think every bowler unconsciously wouldn't you agree, Dan, kind of establishes a, a certain time period between each shot? And yeah, just uh, everything in, in this game relates to timing. It's just like the baseball pitcher throwing strikes. You've got to step out of him. He's trying to slow him down, break his rhythm. Same way in bowling. Neil leads by eight in the match. He's opposite a strike here in the, uh, rather a spare here in the fourth. And he's got a spare in the fourth. And we will pause just about at the halfway point of this championship match. Candlepin Stars and Strikes, just one week away from the Tournament of Champions. We'll be back. So each bowler working on spares. As we continue the second game, Len LeBlanc will be first. Well, Glenn has been all over the head pin in this game. He's still on lane 32. <laughs> He's in the middle. Can't, he comes a little full. If he pull the ball a little more, he might be nice and tight in a 1-3 pocket. He'll get a break, but he's leaving that five pin split. Oh. Nice, that seven pin to fall forward. Good effort. Two marks this this uh, this game, and he's hit the head pin both times on the bonus balls, and he got a total of nine pins. 57 half. As this match gets deeper and deeper, we'll be keeping an eye on those qualifying scores for the Tournament of Champions. But right now, the match itself very much in doubt, and of course, the score doesn't matter if you don't qualify. Got spare. A, got a break there, but he converts it for the spare. Glenn, in. Glenn has marks Dan in on lane 31 in every box in this game. Second, fourth, and sixth. But he's come up empty on lane 32, although he's thrown the ball pretty well. Neil Goslin. Seven on his spare. He leads by 10. 2 7 10. We like that piece of wood behind the two up a little farther. I don't know if it's got the angle to make the 10 pin or not. Nope. Almost had to go by the 2 pin, clip the bottom of the wood, the ball take the 7, and have the wood twist away, knocking the 2 and possibly the 10. Adds another pin to his lead. It's 11, halfway through. Right, squarely on the head pin, and look at that. Same <laughs> shot. Same shot, but actually it's a little easier this time. Um, <laughs> it's a tough, tough shot, but uh, the wood actually was not in a good position behind the two. Ooh, I thought maybe he was going to try and pinch that wood and the two pin at the same Kept time. It. Yeah, that would have been another shot, but he tried to cut it. It's pinning well. Let's take another look at it. Watch the two pin. Not too far away from the 10. Need to cut it a little more to the left. Now Glenn LeBlanc, let's see if he can better his fill. Oh, yeah, he does. Oh, he might have finally figured out lane 32, at least on that ball. Maybe a little more speed. It held the line for him a little more. Didn't break as sharply at the end, and he was just dead in the 1-2 pocket that time. 
looking for the double strike. And that's and in there, oh. same ball. <laughs> I thought he had it. Carbon copy of the one he just threw on lane 32, but this time he leaves the nine. Now that piece of wood rolled up against the nine pin. Now it's out, so he's got a choice. He can go right down between the wood or play the wood. And like the good veteran he is, I would have. He does. <laughs> <laughs> he gets to spare. That's why you should always watch the wood, because if it rests against the wood and it does not turn but just rolls out, you know it will cover the pin. I thought you were going to say that's why you should always trust a veteran bowler, because they'll <laughs> always play it right. I thought that's what you were going to say. Uh, I thought of it, but I, you know. <laughs> Yeah, Louise Hamilton just ran out and stole one of Glenn's balls. <laughs> she came back up the channel, and now she passes it to Dottie. Dottie <laughs> it's a relay. <laughs> well, I think Neil thought he'd have a little more to show for that first ball. It's usually the way here. Lighter hit on the head pin usually does a lot more damage. This time it didn't. Ooh! Well, the wood's heading toward the seven pin, but it's not going to get there. Hard enough, anyway. And a 10. But the lead has changed hands, as you can see. Glenn LeBlanc now with the edge and with a mark up in the eighth. Well, he's had a few shots at these, these type of shots, opposite side. This time the 378. Before it was a 2710. Actually, 3710. Very close to cutting it over this time. Anything different is the three pin as opposed to the two. And mm. close again, but result seven box. Drops three more in count. Lead now 12 plus this ball. As Glenn LeBlanc has put up three marks in a row, as you see. A little off target on that one. So after throwing the big strike on 32 a minute ago, this time he is off target again. Oh, but he turns it into a pretty spare. Four marks in a row. Just barely touches the head pin. And, well, that went quick for being kind of spread out. Phil on the spare. He's got to hurry. <laughs> oh, he got a break there, but he might have wanted the head pin up. Let's see. He's got that 7 8. None of the wood seems to be at the right angle for him. Let's see. He got a third piece coming up. Maybe that's the place, right in the V of those two pieces of wood to the right. Ignore the one on the left. Yes! Or use oh. the one on the left. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was interesting. We'll take another look at that one, see what happened. I think he had the angle on that piece of wood at all, but no, it came right off the wall, just enough to carry the seven pin. I thought using the right, he had an angle of coming off the right side wall and across, but that's why Glenn's up there bowling and I'm behind this microphone. Well, after a slow start, Glenn pours it on five straight marks in the last five boxes. And he turns a 57 half into a 141. Two string total, 267. Seven marks in that game. Neil Gosling looking for one mark. He's been in a little, little dry spell here the last few boxes. 137. Going to need some help with a seven pin. Oh, right, right by it. Right over the top. Gee. Gonna have to have Louise Hamilton remove that loose ball in the gutter because that's where Neil will be shooting for the seven pin. So Louise gets to add to her collection. That's right. <laughs> Got one of Glenn's and one of Neil's now. <laughs> I, think she, I think she trades them with her friends. Yeah, she's they passing it to Dottie both times. And it was a nine box anyway. So the lead now is 
blossomed to 24 in favor of Glenn LeBlanc. Well, I would say, uh, well, even though Glenn only put a three on this mark in the 10th, it'd be nice for Neil to go into the third game with a mark here, and it's coming forward. The one three with Wood. Yep, nestled right against the one and the three now. A mark would put the lead under 20, most likely. There it is. So now just depending on the fill. A strike would leave the lead at, well actually a strike would leave the lead at 31. Oh, how about nine? 116, two string total, 249. No, I was right to begin with. It was under 20. I, I seem to be confusing spares with strikes today. Have you noticed that? I don't know why that is. It's the, all me, the tension. Me I and everybody else has noticed it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure they have. Well, the lead anyway is 18. Trust me on this. 18 is the lead. And we have one game to go in the championship match. We'll be back. Well, the crowd is trying to inspire Neil Gosselin as he is in an 18 point jam, an 18 pin jam here. That should seem nothing to him compared to last week. I was just say, he's got him right where he wants him. <laughs> yeah, last week it was 53 at one point. Nice looking quarter. Right down. Three and One, two, four, and the eight pin in the back. Spare, tough shot too. Very quickly done too. Uh, can't overestimate the importance of that big spare with the nine on it in the tenth of that second game, I don't think, Dan, because that did cut the lead from up near 30 down to 18. And that's a lot more manageable with one game to go. Of course, he trailed by 26 going into the third game last week. Nope. Missed the two pin. If you're thinking ahead already to where the final score here might fit in in the overall Tournament of Champions picture. Remember the bottom qualifier right now is Stu Bergman with 380. And next above him, you have to go 30 pins up as Glenn LeBlanc strikes in the first. And Glenn LeBlanc now has marks in six straight boxes over two strings. Doesn't Used to be all or nothing on lane 32 for him. Absolutely. Ooh. That time lofted the ball out further on the lane. Pulled the ball to the right. He's working on a strike, Doug, so he gets another ball. So what I was a... <laughs> You're having trouble with spares and strikes. I just thought I'd just tell you he's got another ball coming. <laughs> What I was about to say was that uh, you have to go 30 pins up from Stu Bergman to that next qualifying score. Mike Morgan at 410. Ben, how about that for a 10 box? Remember that one. Three balls is a 10, right? Three you balls, three balls ten. Yeah, a 10. You're getting box. it okay. after what, eight years? <laughs> yeah. <are you> <laughs> 17 pins now, the advantage for Glenn LeBlanc. Well, the 1789 will be the target this time. With the wood the bear, there, it's a makeable shot. So the point was that uh, unless one of these guys really has a huge third game, right now it would appear that everybody above Stu Bergman is probably safe, but who knows? The score's gonna add up here in a hurry. You see him convert the 1789. Looks like it might be one of those. Ooh. Well, let's make a six instead. You heard him try to snap it over. Gonna play the wood in front of the four seven. After that, needs a lot of help for the five ten. Caught it well to the right. Well. Neil has to go up there every time thinking I've got to put up at least one mark so that I can put a little pressure on Glenn LeBlanc. So he did it that time. We'll see what Glenn does. Oh, 
Glenn is in the pocket nicely again on lane 32, and it'll be the two and the five. Make it the three and the five. Be careful here. It's the wood in between could snap the three pin around the five. Oh, and he came back to get it. <laughs> Just with that angle, I knew that wasn't going to carry the five unless he was inside the three five. I'll tell you, he just barely clipped the five pin on the way by in the back. So he matches the spare in the third. And he matches the fill. So the leader will remain at the 17, but he can gain a couple in count. It's opposite an eight frame. Ooh, <laughs> almost cut it over. Well, the boxes dwindle down. We now have six remaining in the match, and Glenn LeBlanc has a 19-pin lead with six boxes to go. Is it enough? We'll find out when we come back. Six boxes to go to decide this thing. There's the situation for Neil Goslin. Stumbled a little bit. Yeah, had a little trouble with the approach that time. Half was to right. Oh, what a recovery! Turns it into a spare. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And stumble and be that much off target the first time and come right back three quarters on the head pin and convert that to a spare. Boy, has to give you a little shot of adrenaline, that's for sure. Oh, I'm just going to try it again. <laughs> this time on the other side. It's been every other box for Marks, all in lane 32. First, the third, and the fifth. And he's trying it again. That close. <laughs> <laughs> well, he put the mark up. He talked about putting a mark up every time, but of course, he only got the two fill on it, so that'll, in essence, cancel it out. And if everything goes way it's been going this game, then Glenn will put a mark up as well, because he's matched every mark that Neil has put up in the first and the third. Now he's facing one in the fifth. No, nope. he's got a shot at it with three and five and a tough piece of wood. He's almost going to have to cap the wood. If he hits it on the red line on that side, I think it'll just sweep in front of the five pin. Like that. That's right. Had to come up high. That with a 10, he'll only lose two in count. Well, at least lose three in count. So after five boxes of the third game, he's only gained one pin in the lead. Came in. Trailing, well, no, came in at 18. Yeah, so he's gained two. One in the two left for Glenn. Ooh. 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 Well, two two pin leaves for spares for Glenn, and he's unable to pick up either one. He loses only three pins in count, though, in the two frames, so he still leads by 16. Now with four boxes remaining. So it's a two-mark lead, if you want to look at it that way. 16 pins is two good marks. Neil trailed by 13 at this same juncture last week. He's looking at the three, the seven, the 10. Piece of wood in between the three and the seven, and also next to the three pin. No. Great try, but. So for the first time this game, Neil is open on lane 32. And he really can't be afforded to be open on lane 31 right now. As I said, he needs at least two marks. He has three frames remaining. That's assuming that Glenn doesn't mark at all going out which is not very likely. Well, he wants that wood out of there. Even with it out of there, it's yeah. been a difficult shot. Still a tough shot. 
the three, the five, the nine. You gotta go heavy on the three to carry the nine, and sometimes you just take the three and the nine, leave the five. Oh, oh, that's great a great shot. shot. In that situation, even a better shot. You're right, that's always a difficult shot, but under the circumstances, that's a great one. That's his 13th mark, he had 13 last week. Glenn LeBlanc also has 13. He just slides by the head pin. Well, he might have been better off with the four horsemen up. The one, six, ten, no wood really to, to speak of behind the six and ten. I don't think that was gonna. Whoa, <laughs> off the wall, you got the one and the ten, needs some help with the six. Let's see what happens, he may, the wood may have cost, yeah, the wood cost, well, actually the wood took the ten pin and then the wood came back across for the six. And oh, that's a big one. Fell. Yep. That's a big one, and this could mean the difference in the match, if you can get this one. Because you'll have a 25-pin lead with the mark, and there it is. 25-pin lead going into the last two. And he is at 367 right now, so you're looking at the 380 mark to climb above Stu Bergman, who is in fifth spot at this time in the Tournament of Champions. And it looks like he'll certainly pass that. The question is, will Neil Gosselin pass him? <laughs> And to do it, he's going to need strikes here in the last two frames. But instead, he's got the 7-8 with a piece of wood that may not do him any good. No, he's got to play the wood one end or the other. He's got to have some help. So I'd, well, you've got to probably go right-hand tip of it and try to slide it across. but Or go at the 8-pin and clip the wood and hope something else funny happens. No. Mm -hmm. A near impossible shot. One ten with one box to go. And uh, unless Neil were to throw something significant here in the tenth, Glenn LeBlanc may have it wrapped up. Oh, first the 7-8, now the 9-10. And in actuality, if you can't catch uh, Mike Morgan, uh, he's still going to be bowling for that last spot against Stu Bergman. That's so. right. An 8-box, a 118, and it's already, well, with this next ball, it will be over. Glenn LeBlanc will cinch the championship with the fill on this spare. You need a 144 to pass Mike Morgan. So he's got the win now. And he's at 107 in the eighth. Nope. No mark that time. So he would need a double strike. All right, he's already passed Stu Bergman into fifth because he's at 384 right now. So double. Oh, Glenn has called a foul on himself on that last, last ball. So it is a nine box in the ninth. And there's an example of bowler etiquette right there. And you could say, well, he's already won the match, but point is also the final score counts too. Glenn turned around and let us know, so the computer is now correct, a nine in the ninth and a spare here in the tenth. It won't be enough to uh, move him any higher than fifth, but Glenn LeBlanc has done what he wanted to do, which is take advantage of that number one seeding and move into the Tournament of Champions. And he'll be back with us next Sunday to bowl in the first week of the championship. A six fill, a 132, and a 399 for Glenn LeBlanc, winning the cheer series championship and moving into the Tournament of Champions, beating Neil Gosselin, and we'll talk to both bowlers and set you up for the tournament after these words. Well, welcome back to Stars and Strikes. We're right on the edge of the uh, Tournament of Champions. It'll begin next Sunday, and unfortunately, it will not include Neil Gosselin, but Neil, uh, all in all, for your first two appearances here, uh, 
not too shabby. You had a big win last week against Gary Carrington coming from behind, and this time $500 for a finishing second. I enjoyed myself very much. It was fun. Uh, Just Glenn had a good ball working, and he, he bowled. He's, uh, good luck to him in the Tournament of Champions. Well, we appreciate uh, your coming in, and uh, it was a great match last week, and another good one this time. Uh, we'll see you again hopefully next season. I hope so. All Thank right, you thanks very, very much. much, Neil. Thank you. All right, that's Neil Gosselin. And now Glenn LeBlanc to roll a bonus ball for us. We're going to see if we can't give away $110 and some bowling balls here. So let's see. Well, it's an eight on the late carry, Dan. Let's see what we can do about this. Just heightening the drama a little bit. Not a good feeling. You, you didn't have a good feeling. For uh, Kay Fair from uh, Lawrence, Mass. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Kay Fair in Lawrence. And her guess was five, so Kay will be uh, sending you a consolation gift. And that means next week when we begin the Tournament of Champions, it'll be $120, and it'll also be Glenn LeBlanc because you'll be back next week to uh, face Stu Bergman. Uh, I know you very much wanted to take advantage of that number one spot, and you were able to do it. Oh, this feels great. <laughs> this is great. This is what you come here for. You know, you can't really think about what you're going to hit for a score. You just try to win. And I won. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, though, Neil, unbelievable. It's the first time I've seen him. And he did great last week. He was, I was here last week, and he bowled great today. He was all over the head pin. And, you know, leaving that 2 7 10, 3 7 10 all day, that's tough to look at. Yeah. And uh, I got away with one here. Well, again, though, congratulations. The 399, as you say, put you in the fifth spot. Uh, and we're going to be seeing you again next Sunday, first week of the Tournament of Champions against Stu Bergman. Congratulations. Man. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thanks very much. Congratulations. Oh, by the way, we also have a check for you. Can I give that to you, too? Sure. A thousand dollars, just a thousand dollars. I thought we might well. I, I give that to you too. Okay. Thanks very much, Glenn. <laughs> well, I just don't. I, I know the the money doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, it's just the win and all that that's important, right? Nice move, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's look at the Tournament of Champions now and see how it shapes up for the next five weeks. Again, uh, beginning next Sunday at 12 noon, and for five weeks. It'll be the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions here at 12 noon. It'll be singles, and then at one o'clock, of course, it'll be on Stars and Strikes doubles in doubles competition. And there you have it with Glenn LeBlanc and Stu Bergman starting us off next week. Great lineup. Can't wait. I'm sure the crowd's waiting, uh, probably lining up already outside. <laughs> All right, but we do have one more piece of business to take care of before next week, and that is in just a few minutes when we'll be back for Stars and Strikes doubles in the championship match there to see which final team will enter the doubles tournament of champions. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, Doug Brown from Park Place Lanes. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.